uh, of course, um, now we have a, a short glance to the uh, to our supported hardware. There's a, lo a large list, and uh, you can get also this uh, presentation for the hardware uh, as a PDF. So if you're interested, you simply can request it for us. Maybe you have it also in the download link uh, when you get the link to this uh, webinar. If not, let me know and we can send it to you very soon after we finish today. So we will have also a very short look or discussion about light and lens. Most people forget it. And especially if you want to measure something, uh, uh, let's say contrast is the important thing. <laughs> but contrast uh, is mostly based on light and lens. Uh, of course, you can generate contrast also electronically, but uh, finally, uh, this kind of contrast is not the best one. The first one is to have a good signal, and the good signal uh, is based on a good light and a good, uh, a good light lens filter uh, combination in front of the camera. Uh, if, this, uh, if all of this is done, then one can think about electronic uh, improvements of the image. So then we will have a short uh, overview about the um, instruction set and data streams uh, and structure of the iVision software. We will have a look to image capture and how to generate contrast or what, what is available to generate contrast depending on the cameras, on the settings and all the stuff. And um, then we will have a short uh, look to subpixel measurement or let's say measurement in principle and subpixel measurement and special. Uh, then we do some uh, real programming, see how the software works. And uh, we have a lo uh, closer look to some examples so that you see how to make uh, some projects with the software. So what we have uh, is the iVision software. It looks like this one here. So you have, as I told you before, the instruction set as a program editor. I will go a little bit more in detail in a few minutes. And uh, one or more image camera viewer. You have more image memories than you can view, uh, but you can view as many as you want also. And you have also the option to generate your user interface. Uh, which is important, of course, at the end, uh, if you make any solution with the vision software, so that the customer gets a nice interface. Um, one of the important things for you is uh, whatever camera you have, you have always the same tool set. So as I told you, we have one software for all hardware. That means we have also one software, one image capture. Independently, if we capture a gray image, uh, color image, a 3D image, a hyperthermal or a thermal image or a hyperspectral image. You don't have to think about, oh, what tool I need or how to do it. You have always the same tool. Uh, you have a, a filter set and you have all kind of edge detection, which is important for uh, measurement and metrology and um, also for image analysis. So as I mentioned it before, uh, Gray image processing and metrology uh, is always based on a good light lens and filter, um, as all machine vision is based on that. Uh, of course, um, you saw at the very end uh, the deep learning stuff, and of course the deep learning stuff is not so sensitive for this, but we cannot measure with deep learning finally. So this is the important thing uh, we have uh, a close look to measurement today and measuring means you need uh, a, a good contrast and a good contrast uh, is also always based uh, on a good light and lens. Uh, this is really important. It sounds like uh, it's evident, but uh, we see it always if you, uh, in most cases, um, if the measurements are not stable, uh, um, the, the problem is not that the that the tools are not working because we know the tools are working in all cases it's uh, the light and lens condition because the, um, either the the light changes or the lens or whatever is changing in the uh, in the in the generating of the contrast which is based on the edges because at the end you want to measure edges and uh, um, and unfortunately if you do it optically 
the edge is based on the contrast and therefore on the light. So this is really important to take it in, uh, take it care. We have a special presentation and webinar. It's called the ray of light. Maybe I, I show you a, uh, a few slides of this later if uh, it's interesting for you. Else I could really recommend to have a look at it to see what kind of light is available and what you can do with light. Uh, generated con contrast and gen generated a good contrast means uh, to have a good a mesh and vision solution, a stable measurement. If you have a bad contrast, you have bad mesh and vision solu solution, or you have a, a changing uh, measurements uh, during your um, during the inspections, uh, which means you never get um, a well working inspection. So. Let's have a look to the different data streams. iVision can handle all kinds of data, as I told you at, at the beginning. So today our main focus is on um, gray image. Images um, independently, if it's a 2D or 1D uh, uh, gray image, uh, uh, it's independent. Uh, we can also operate on the int intensity images intensity images are kind of gray images as well as the thermal images are also a kind of gray image it's uh, a kind of 16-bit data on which the same algorithms can operate so um, let's have first a short look to the different um, hardware platforms which are supported and um, where, where you can use the uh, iVision software, as you saw right now, we, we are on, uh, we have the iVision 4 right now. This means it's version 4 um, with uh, a lot of nice features. But at the end, uh, you have the option to use this software uh, on all these uh, supported platforms. I, I do a short, uh, fast step through only to uh, give it to your mind what you can use with the software. You can do all the measurement, everything with all these hardware uh, platforms. So we start with the, uh, let's say, smart cameras, and then we have a look to the embedded systems, and then to the PC systems, and for some, to some cameras. I think most of you know all the cameras, but a short look might be interesting. So the smart camera, we support for the moment all known, uh, well, let's say, well known. Uh, smart camera manufacturers. So there are some PC-based smart cameras. This means it's a normal PC in this in a housing with a sensor. Then it's called smart camera, and um, therefore, um, one second. Um, so one is uh, the uh, the smart camera from Atlink or from Hikvision from Rossig from Dahua or from Ximia, uh, or we do also support uh, uh, the camera from, uh, if you are here, it's, it's missing from Adva uh, Advantech. So you, we also have uh, support the different uh, smart cameras with ARM-based uh, CPUs, for example, from Smart Vision Sensor Part uh, or from Tatile. And uh, of course, some of these are, uh, a little bit aged and uh, some of them are now on the way to be outdated. Um, so uh, as you can see, all these have uh, ARM CPU inside with a different uh, clock speed. Here, as I mentioned at the very beginning, this is the Jupiter uh, camera. It's a line scan camera, uh, which is built uh, by us. Uh, based on the on a customer need, so uh, we didn't found a smart camera with a line scan sensor, and therefore we we built one uh, by ourselves. You get this camera uh, with a Zunk CPU or ultra scale right now, and you can operate all the iVision software inside of the camera. So we have also the vision uh, components platforms and the VR magic platforms. As you can see, all these are ARM-based uh, CPUs, which means at the end, um, uh, these are Linux machines. And uh, 
the software is working also on this. Of course, we also support uh, not with the current version, but with the older version, uh, DSP-based smart cameras, but also these are now outdated as some of the ARM platforms, uh, but they are still uh, no longer valid. Uh, for the embedded systems, you, we have a wide selection of all current uh, uh, ARM platforms in the market, and we are able and support uh, additional ones if there are some interesting uh, versions. Uh, so I think the most known of these uh, ARM platforms is the Raspberry Pi. Uh, here, the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, where we support where we can run the complete software in the Raspberry Pi with all kind of, uh, um, in this case, MIPI uh, camera modules. But we also support on these uh, platforms uh, the standard cameras, which uh, are um, standard cameras with USB or Gig E port, as far and as long the hardware has the, um, the ports to connect the cameras. So these are all kind of. Uh, uh, small embedded platforms with ARM, also the NVIDIA. Uh, so finally there is Xavier and uh, of course all uh, your ones will also be supported. Um, then of course you can use any kind of embedded uh, PC version. In that case you have only the standard interface like USB 3 or Geek E. We don't really suggest to use a USB 2 camera for an for a industrial solution uh, for your uh, usage, uh, for the use on your PC to do some tests, especially if you don't know the software and you want to test it and you don't have one of the standard uh, cameras from a manufacturer. Of course, you can use any USB camera like the built-in webcam of your PC or any other USB camera. We also do support that. So these are uh, simple some PCs in different versions. Uh, this one is a nice one based on the different um, uh, I.O. Uh, PLC I.O.s, uh, but also with uh, different uh, Geek E, POE uh, connections. So it's very easy to use Geek E cameras with this one. Uh, at the end, these are PCs. You can run these either with Windows or Linux. Uh, that brings uh, us to the point you can use the, or you can get the iVision software always as a Windows or, uh, or a Linux version. Of course, it's a ARM, if it's an ARM platform, we only support Linux for the moment, as long as Microsoft doesn't have a very good, stable Windows version for ARM. And of, uh, of course, if you don't use these embedded-based systems, you can use any standard PC or industrial PC. These are some examples of it where you can put plug-in boards for the additional interfaces. Therefore, a short uh, overview, of course, we stu uh, support all the standard interfaces, USB 2, USB 3, Gig E, of course, FireFire, as long as it's available, or if you have a plug-in board with FireWire, um, we do support it. And you can use all these cameras which are supported by these buses. Or you can use also camera link, co-express uh, or analog uh, interfaces. And therefore you need, of course, some plug-in boards. Uh, therefore, we also support a selection of manufacturers of boards. Um, let's say all the mainstream or very, from our perspective, known manufacturers like FT Active Silicon, Bitflow, Eurasis, Matrix Vision, um, or Silicon Software or even a, a very cheap one from uh, the imaging source is supported. So therefore you can select from these manufacturers, you can select all the boards with the different interfaces. This, uh, of course you get these boards also uh, mostly, or you should use it, or it makes sense only in most cases if you use a, a non-standard interfaces like Camera Link and Coexpress. But as you see, also these manufacturers have these um, for example, standard interface like a GI or analog interface. And therefore, and this you will find also from nearly all these board manufacturers. Uh, so if you want to use one of these cameras, you have to select one of the supported boards or let us know if you want to use any other board, we can also support these uh, if there is a somewhat quantity behind of it. Uh, for GIG-E, as we see now, uh, there are upcoming a lot of 
10 gig e cameras. We, of course, support the gig, uh, 10 gig e uh, interfaces. And um, we see for also some reasons it makes sense to use 10 gig e if you have multiple cameras which you want to connect to one PC. And um, then it's much easier. You can use 10 gig e over a switch and connect the standard gig e cameras uh, much easier. Uh, so, of course, we, we support these uh, standard interface boards. I just skip over of this once. Uh, as I told you, we support because all PC application or all machine vision application needs some I.O. capability. Therefore, we support a lot of I.O. protocols uh, from uh, Profibus to Profinet, um, Modbus, PLC, Link, TwinCAT, EtherCAT, OPC, o o uh, MQTT, and so on. Um, if you want to use the uh, digital I.O., we support some digital I.O. ports, which 24 volt uh, technology as a plug-in. Um, so from different manufacturers, but also we also support uh, digital I.O. based on uh, some add-on components which you connect to the PC or to the embedded system. We are... Um, uh, an additional I.O. board or uh, a DIN rail component. So, and of course, then you have a wide selection of camera manufacturers, which you can use with iVision software without thinking about how to make it. So simply use the uh, iVision software and work on it, on these different cameras. Of course, I think finally, uh, you these are some examples of the different interfaces um, so you see uh, uh, here, especially at the end, this is a Quark's Press camera. At the end, it's a, a gray camera or a color camera, which transfers the image data to the main, to the PC. Uh, finally, or right now, we have a wide uh, selection of um, MIPI modules, which enables uh, to make nice uh, modules uh, or nice solutions uh, based on uh, uh, the MIPI standard in an embedded system. Okay, this was a short overview to the hard supported hardware. Let's have a look to, uh, to the iVision software itself, uh, to the measurement and metrology. Um, and uh, let's start simply with the software and see how to make it. Um, the first step would be To start the iVision software, uh, let's say I stop it for the moment and I restart it. Um, so everybody should have one um, one version of the software right now. Uh, you can install it and can work with the iVision software uh, also with the demo version. You have the full um, usage of everything. And um, uh, if you have the demo version, you have also uh, a full comment uh, set uh, for especially gray and color, of course, uh, especially also for the edge detection and uh, the geometry measurement and geometry operations. So there is no need to, uh, you can test all your needs based on, um, on the demo version. As you can see, also, uh, I use for this presentation here today, the demo version. Uh, that means whatever you see today, you can do it with uh, your demo version. Uh, the only thing what's not really completely working and you will see the, how it looks like, if you do a IO operation uh, in the demo version, the IO operations are restricted, which means uh, they are working, but not always. But uh, uh, you get me also an idea that, of course, I always uh, is working. Um, it's more <clears throat> the uh, the only way how to protect the software that it's used, that the demo version is used um, uh, without the license. So uh, let's have after you have installed software and you start the first time. You have to select the hardware which you want to use. <laughs> Therefore, <clears throat> you um, 
have to um, select the camera hardware and um, the camera hard hardware is based on um, the hardware configurator. And <clears throat> so you can um, select for your project what kind of hardware you want to use. This is the first thing what you have you, you should do because uh, I think you want to operate on images and um, therefore you need an image capture. As you can see here uh, in the presentation, you saw the overview about the, the different supported cameras. So here you see uh, all these uh, camera manufacturers. Uh, this means you have the option to use the native drivers of the manufacturers. Of course, if you use, uh, let's say, a Geek E uh, camera, which is Ginnicam compliant, you can use also the Geek E interface, but um, to have all the features in an easy access, in most cases, the native driver of the manufacturer is the better one. And therefore, we do support all these native drivers. Simply um, select the best fitting driver. We, um, as long as we have, uh, as we support the native driver, we, see, we re, uh, really recommend the native driver. So if you have, for, for example, Basel, you simply select the Basel driver here. Of course, we, you, you have to install the native driver from the, from the man, manufacturer you see, or which one you can select here and how to install it. <clears throat> and after you have installed it, it works. So if you don't have any uh, of these uh, standard uh, machine vision cameras, you can use also the web, uh, the standard USB drivers from Windows. Or if you have a Linux installation of the iVision software, you can select video for Linux instead of direct show. So if you have selected the direct show driver, then you all kind of uh, cameras which are connected to your PC, uh, which support the direct show standard, means all the USB cameras you are, you are using, including the built-in webcams in the laptop can be used uh, with this driver. So you simply select the driver and um, after your, uh, if you have with your driver, you simply apply. I did it anyway, so I don't have to press apply now, right now and you can start with the camera. So uh, here I have a small uh, cheap webcam uh, with a micro microscope effect. You see here, this is a live image from this webcam and <clears throat> This is only that we have a live image. Most of the, for most of the stuff today, we don't need the live image, but for some reasons, it's also nice to have a real image and to operate on some real images. That's why I have this uh, camera here. Um, how does the software work? Of course, uh, first of all, we, you can test everything with the live image button, which also works if the camera has a uh, flash input or triggered input, you can test it also here. <clears throat> this is the fast way to do some tests, especially also, as I told you, light and lens is, is important. That means uh, if you want to see if the light and lens configuration fits very well, you have some tools here, which gives you an idea how good the light and lens combination is. Uh, in this case, uh, for example, you say you, you want to see uh, how is the contrast in this area. Does it work for measurement? Um, you simply uh, activate uh, the histogram value, which gives you a uh, an overview uh, where are the lower and upper uh, tolerances of the of the image, and therefore. Uh, will it be stable or not? If you go to the live image, you see, okay, how stable are the edges? And uh, this is exactly where we want to go um, because measurement means finding, finding edges and the finding edges means we need stable edges. Stable edges means um, if you do a very precise, uh, you want to measure very precise, um, you, uh, you try to operate or to uh, organize that the edge here 
has uh, less um, uh, changes because uh, e each pixel has a size um, if you convert it to millimeter and um, if you have a lot of um, uh, um, modifications in these uh, outlier uh, pixels uh, your measurement value will change of course because this is where you where you think the edge I stopped the live image this is where you think the edge of your image is and uh, as you can see here uh, the normal uh, noise with not perfect um, illumination generates uh, this uh, modification if we simply change the position um, and we have a look to this one after we adjust the brightness so you see now it's uh, definitely more stable this is because the built-in light of this camera has only a limited um, uh, this uh, this uh, intensity in a uh, in a distance now we are much closer and the inten intensity is higher therefore the contrast is better and of course the noise at the end is not so high as it was and um, with the histogram you can see really fast uh, will will it be uh, valuable for us to measure on in this image or not or how can or how should I improve the um, the illumination of course uh, if you look to many machine vision solutions for measurement you will see that um, a backlight situation uh, is used as often as possible uh, for what reason because the backlight situation generates uh, the maximum contrast which results in the best and most stable um, measurements so this is only a short view to the iVision software for about image quality. So you have here some tools which allows you simply to look into the image and get an idea, for example, also the image inspector, get an idea how, um, how good or bad an edge is. So if we have a close look to this uh, edge and we change the the zoom value we can see here how the uh, this edge looks like so we see we we start with 15 and uh, at the edge we have a very fast modification to 166 this is a real good contrast um, it's zero, of course it's not zero to 255 but this is a very contrast which allows stable measurements at the end. These uh, options are mainly here to uh, get a qualification of the image and um, so as I told you the next step would be you have to capture an image at the end um, you with the live image it's only that you get a, a fraction of it if you do it in um, in a measurement uh, operation you need the image um, acquisition tool i think i change the position and um, so that we can see a little bit more of this ring again even if the contrast is not so perfect so what you see here i mentioned it before um, this camera has a built-in um, a filter so I can also adjust a little bit filter which immediately would uh, improve uh, the image quality also as you can as you saw maybe if we have a look to the histogram and we activate the highlight you can see here uh, that that the edges are somewhat better of course um, we have some other effects it's always a question what what do we want to have at the end so maybe for if, if it's a bright and dark situation 
it makes more sense to uh, use this to have uh, as uh, as uh, high contrast as possible to the background and um, we see it now the the edges to the black background are the be are better than maybe if we do this uh, um, filtering um, so filter is something which have to be tested always if one is working with the light and lens uh, of course you can think about some functions of it but in most cases at the end you have to test it what filter uh, re results in the best uh, image quality for the current task so to do some measurement of course we start with the image capture tool as i told you and um, the image capture tool enables you to grab an image from the connected camera. In this case, we have a Dino light camera. This is a small microscope camera. It's really nice, uh, cheap, and easy to use. Uh, it uses DirectX, you know, this is not the machine vision. It's not a primary machine vision camera, but it's nice and it works in many cases. So in this case, um, we simply don't use a, a flicker or a trash. We simply, uh, uh, or, or a trigger or flash. Uh, so we simply do a single capture image from the camera and if we run it um, and if I put my hand under the camera, whoops, then you will see, okay, this is now uh, my finger, it's not sharp. So you see each time we operate here, we capture an image which results in, at the end in the same, um, if you go in run mode of the software, you get uh, the next image and you can operate on the on the image so the first thing what we, we did was to generate a good contrast that's really nice and um, the next thing would be um, how can we operate on it of course if you think the image is not so good or the image quality is not so good then you have the option to operate uh, to use some filters to improve this um, Depending on the need, normally, as I told uh, at the very beginning, it makes sense to uh, improve not uh, the image quality, not by um, electronic filter. The first thing should always be to improve the image quality based on the, um, uh, on the light and lens, and of course, on, the, on some real filters uh, in the, field, uh, in the uh, array of the, uh, of the light. And uh, as you saw, there is a definitive, there is an effect if we, if we uh, modify here uh, this filter, uh, it's a polarization filter. So we could improve um, here uh, something, so the, especially, for example, the reflection of the ring, ring light could be uh, eliminated somewhat. Um, the question is, is it, um, what do we want? We don't want to have uh, this uh, glare effect on the top of the ring. So therefore it makes sense to uh, move, uh, move it more in the direction where the glare effect is vanished. And of course, as far as we move it, also this small dent here uh, in the ring um, would be eliminated depending on if you need the dent, you have to think about how I can uh, handle it to improve uh, to improve the dent to uh, detect it. Uh, either, uh, of course, first of all, you have to improve it in um, in the gray image. Then you can use uh, some operations like uh, blob to find it, or you have we have this um, uh, deep learning tool which in the, uh, enables you to do homogeneity uh, search. That means this here is a uh, inhomogeneity option. But as as better the illumination of the or as as better the contrast of the in uh, inhomogeneity is, as more stable is also the detection of these kind of in inhomogeneities. So, what the best way is to to work on this? It depends always on the, on the options you have. Uh, if you want to measure something, this would 
uh, would generate the best contrast or a very good contrast, let's say this way. So if you have a look to the uh, right bottom side of the camera viewer, you see here we have the resolution of the camera and we see we have the gray image here. And the really important thing is if you move with the cursor in, in the camera, you see here, as you saw it in the histogram, the, the different gray values. So we come from a gray value from about, let's say, 5 to 7 now to 126. If we modify it and uh, generate this one, we will see here, even in the live image, we are now, if we stop it, uh, we are now not at 7 or 6, we are at 30. And of course, uh, we have also an increase in the uh, gray image, but uh, in the bright area. Uh, but uh, at the end, uh, the stability is definitely, definitely not so good as if we use these um, uh, filter in this position here. So. Here we have about uh, five to uh, five to ten, and here to one hundred twenty-seven, and it's homogeneous. It's really homogeneous, so this works much better for the task if you want to measure something. So, finally, this uh, so far we have um, yeah, we entered our first comment in the iVision software, and um, this means um, you saw how we can program it. We simply grab one of the tools you have selected here and uh, uh, you uh, drag it to the uh, C column where, the to, uh, where you can uh, do the um, comment selections depending on the tool. If you need some information about the tools, I always can well, I always recommend that you activate the context help and um, immediately if you open up the tool, you get the complete information of all the parameters of the tool so that it's much easier for you to, uh, to, to handle uh, to, and to adjust the parameters uh, for what you want to do. Um, yes. So let's let's start with some basic steps. Uh, these are what we recommend always. If you do some uh, or you want to, you have to do some machine vision tasks, and maybe you also you want to ask us, our support team, for some help at this uh, at some point. It's um, it's always good if you can send us some detailed information. Uh, detailed information means. Um, uh, optimal, uh, uh, need optimally, we, we need as we need your whatever on what you are working. That means we need some images from you and we need the program. So uh, we have or organized the software, first of all, to handle different projects uh, in one, uh, in one uh, software environment. And uh, therefore, we recommend always if you start with programming the iVision software, you should start with a new project. That's what we recommend always. And that's what I want to do today also. So uh, for today, we say it's a, it's a measurement task. In this case, we would uh, say it's a 2D ray and we do measurement. And maybe ring, whatever you, however you want to name it. It's um, um, no program empty. No, so now the software generates uh, a so-called project. Project means it contains everything what belongs to uh, to the software that it can uh, automatically be restarted. And uh, also that all the stuff which belongs to the project are available. So starting from the hardware. So if you have different projects, you could use different hardware. That means the selection um, 
the, uh, the uh, selection of the camera parameter. Um, on the project uh, can be set here so that automatically if you start a project, um, the right hardware selection is used. If you use different uh, projects on a PC, you could use once a 3D camera, on the other side two 2D cameras or whatever. Uh, all these settings are stored in the project. But also the background and uh, if you generate user interfaces, also the user interfaces are stored. I will show you some of the user interfaces later. So this, uh, now we started with our 2D gray measurement ring. This is how we named it. And if you want to see where it's stored, you simply, you simply can go to the show data directory that, uh, 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 that um, ends in the folder iVision, where the iVision data are. And here, because it's a project, you have to look into project folder and you see here um, how it's called 2D gray measurement. Um, so 2D gray measurement, here we, here we are. And uh, if we open up, we see here a, a set of folders. This means this, um, this folders contain all the information. For the moment, the folders are empty. If you look to programs, there is no program. If you look to images, there's no image. But in a few seconds, we will uh, add some images so that you see how you can get support also from us and how it's easier to handle your projects. If you, if you do different or you test different solutions for your, uh, on your side, you can make for each of these a project and everything uh, what belongs to the project. For example, if you do a code reading and you have different OC OCR character sets, uh, the OCR character sets are stored in the data field. Uh, or if you generate um, uh, a web interface, the software can also support, uh, has also a web server for if you want to control your software uh, based on the web server, you simply can use the web server for that. So let's say, um, and that's, that's why you have all these uh, different parameters, especially also uh, the, the selected hardware uh, or the layouts and everything is uh, collected under the project, in this case, uh, gray measurement ring. Yeah, and if you have a, questions, a question for us or for our support, you simply make a zip file out uh, from this gray measurement ring and we have everything that will you will see it in a few seconds so for example uh, of course our um, image capturing tool is still working and we make a, a, our first program let's say the first program it's called image capture um, from from the camera so that means if we, if we run it now you see here we get the image capture and uh, if you uh, if you have questions or you want to ha have uh, you want to get some support from us, it helps us always if we have also these images. In this case, uh, we simply uh, recommend that you use the image capture tool again, and of course not with the option capture. You say simply save, and um, you say continuous with uh, with timestamp and as you see, we automatically uh, arrive in the folder projects to the gray image images. And there we, for example, make a folder, generate a folder. It's our images. And um, we start with do cap uh, ring. Let's say ring. And um, we, in, of course, if you want to have precise message, I would say BMP, uh, but only for test or some other, uh, not jump, GP, JP, uh, JPEG image. Uh, so use JPEG because it saves a lot of space. Uh, if you want to send it uh, by um, mail and also for support, normally JPEG is enough. <clears throat> 
So what does it what uh, what does it mean now? Each time we run the program, and I show it to you now. I move the ring a little bit, and I run the program again, and I move in move it uh, once again. Only that we have some images. Let's say once more. So four images is enough for for the moment. If you have more, the more the better. But so for uh, a couple of images would really good would, would be really good if you um, if you need some support from us. So uh, then let's say we save all of this program uh, capture. And um, because if you want to capture and save more images later, you can also put everything in one big comment, but you can handle as many comments as you want or many programs as you want, and you don't have a problem. So if you have now a look to that folder, and if you have a look to programs, now we see we have the capture and save. And if you look to the image, we have our images and we have these now uh, five images. So. <clears throat> That's pretty good. Uh, now the good thing is, uh, if you do your normal programming, you can uh, capture images from the ring and do, well, let's say, all the all kind of work. For example, you do an object count here to find uh, the black object here. That means uh, uh, this one here in the center. Of course, we have some, uh, we have center object and some others. So you can say, ignore the boundary objects. So we have one object. And if you have uh, maybe some, no some noise you want to distract, uh, eliminate, you simply uh, add a filter, which reduces all the small um, <clears throat> noisy part of the image. And so now you have this first image, you can run it. And uh, the interesting thing is now you see the software, uh, this is now a running program. At the end, uh, we start this program also, let's say, uh, find black. So, and um, that's nice. If you, <clears throat> you could also enter now, instead of this capture image, uh, maybe I generate a little bit more space here. Uh, you have this capture image. You can say, "Okay, you want to, you want get some help from us." Uh, we start the images, and you can simply say, "Load image, cyclic," or someone from us can do it. And we select this our images. And uh, in this case, uh, as you see, we do this. Uh, now we capture the image not from the camera because we disabled. The tool here in the uh, in the uh, in the execution column, and uh, we use the capture image from the file. That means if you need help, you simply send us this folder, and uh, our support team can simply cap use the captured images and see what you have done without your setup, without everything from you. Uh, if you have whatever you have done, we have it then on our side here, and it makes. Uh, it much easier to generate some support. So uh, now we, we made our first uh, small uh, uh, program, uh, find the black object. This is the center of this uh, ring, and that's pretty good. Um, so the next step would be maybe to have uh, to, to do some measurements. Um, of course, the, the question is what kind of measurement? Uh, one would be, uh, let's say we do the caliper measurement. I work now on the stored images and we can switch also to the real images later. So right now I would say I, I use this caliper tool. Um, this caliper tool is a combination of different, uh, could be also generated with different sim uh, simple tools from the geometry and edge detection. So the caliper tool has an edge detector here, an edge detector here, and out, it, because um, the caliper detects the, uh, the, the distance between these two edge detectors, 
um, uh, it will find the edges and uh, measure the distance. So if you maybe press test, you will see, okay, it's not working. Um, of course, you see, you can open up now the help file. And um, if you read through all this help file, uh, you will find, ah, uh, normally we are looking for a dark object. So I know this because the, uh, I know the software. I can simply change to a bright object and then we can see we have a threshold of 170. This is too high. So we have to reduce it to, if you go over this one, we see 212. So we can use 80 maybe. And um, immediately uh, the tool uh, detects the edges and um, automatically will uh, do the measurement. Um, yes. So now you might think, why is it not using automatic threshold? Yes. So you will see in all the other tools, you can also use the automatic threshold feature, but the automatic threshold feature results uh, always in an edge, but because it adapts the threshold, it adapts also the value because it searches as it tries to find an edge as long as it, there is one and not a special edge. And this generates um, a value, but not a stable value. And it's not always the same because uh, for example, if you have a production line and due to some um, modifications in the product or uh, aging of the product or whatever, the part is sometimes a little bit brighter and sometimes a little bit not darker, uh, then you have uh, different edge values, uh, different edge values. That means uh, between bright and uh, dark, uh, the values are different. And you have also a different edge position. And the edge position defines the distance and the quality of the distance. Therefore, we highly recommend always, and that's why automatically we have a fixed threshold activated in the software. We highly recommend if you want to make a real measuring machine um, to use a fixed threshold where you uh, organize all the parameters around the measurement that they are also fixed. So that means the light generates a, a fixed light situation uh, so that you always do the edge detection based on the same parameters, which results also in the same edge point and uh, at the end in a stable measurement. Sounds really trivi trivial, but um, I know uh, many people say, ah, that's really not inconvenient and it's much easier if the software is uh, doing it always. Um, but on the other side, uh, if, if you want to have a qualified measuring tool, you need these uh, fixed parameters to be sure that you get it always the right, uh, the, the value you have designed the system for it. It's like if you use the caliper, and of course, you, I think if you use it sometimes, you can change the value of the caliper if you press the two, um, the two uh, measurement uh, uh, parts together, uh, you change the value. Either you simply attach it slightly or you press it. And of course, if it's, uh, if it's a metal part, you don't get so much difference. If the part is not so rigid, uh, you can change the value really uh, uh, a lot based on the pressure. And um, uh, this is similar to the, to the measurement in, in gray image. You, um, you could uh, change this um, automatic uh, edge detection, but then uh, this is like you press it at the end that you get any measurement, but it's not what you really uh, have designed the system for. So, but now we, 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 uh, we modified the, the, the small program and we save it as um, find, find black object and measure, for example. 
So as you see now uh, in this folder, the number of uh, programs increase because everything is stored related to this. Now we do uh, find object and measure, uh, but maybe you saw it before. Uh, these are the stored images, so it's not working always. It's only working if the part is at the same position. Of course, uh, in most cases in uh, industrial uh, situations, uh, of course you have it on trays, but even the tray has some um, uh, tolerances, so the part is moving slightly. Um, so one option could be you simply increase the search area uh, so that it fits always. This is one option. Um, as long as the part is, uh, okay, now we can do it more often, often. We could increase it and increase it. But the other thing is in most cases you have to adjust the, pos uh, the position uh, uh, to the part. Uh, even if the part uh, is moving slightly, then uh, it's easier to be at the same po position of the part to do where you want to measure. Therefore, um, of course, you find in the software an option to do it. This is based on this calibration tool. And this calibration tool um, can simply move the origin of the, of the, uh, of the uh, field of view uh, to a new position. At the very beginning, the origin is the top left. And uh, with this tool, we move the origin into the, into the center, in this case, of the object. So, and um, why do we do this? This is simply because uh, each tool re relates to the image, to the origin of, uh, to the origin point. And, um, if we um, um, if we do it this way, um, of course I didn't. <laughs> I have forgotten to explain something. If you do it this way, we can uh, organize that the tools follow the part based on the new origin. So this uh, was the blob tool, or you can use also, of course, one of the other tools like the key match, which would match. In this case, it's a round object. It makes no sense to match something because it's round. It's always the same. Um, uh, we, we have a look to, to some other objects where it makes sense in a few seconds. So uh, here we, we have this round object. We put the origin into the center point of the object and um, we use this center point as a new origin point of our, uh, uh, the, the new origin of all of our tools. And therefore, if we now take the caliper tool uh, the caliper tool uses this origin uh, for his position adjustment. That means now we can really position it very precise here um, to this part. And of course, uh, we deleted it. We have to set back to 30 and also to the edge, which we, of course, normally you do it with the uh, with the uh, histogram value that, that you see where, uh, where the gray and uh, the bright and dark values are. And now you see the caliper is moving with the part. Um, why does the caliper now move with the part? As I told you, the caliper belongs to the coordinate system. If the coordinate system moves, the caliper moves. So now we're measuring the part always at the caliper position. And uh, we have the uh, values independent uh, where this part is in the field of view. And of course, if you have a question, the nice thing is you can send us this project and we can help you because uh, the, our support team simply gets all the information. Of course, for your tests, you can, take, you can use your camera. So now we run it and you see now we get the images from the camera and you see, of course, it's not too stable. So we have at the edge some points and which means which are moving and therefore we have also moving part. But you see this is now uh, as long as we don't disturb. Uh, okay here. 
the it's doing it in life as long as it's in the in the option that you can measure something so uh, so there is no difference between uh, loaded image images and captured images so that means we, we can generate you we can give you support what the other way is you can simply capture images if you do the inspection at the machine you can simply run the machine capture a bunch of images go to your office and do all the programming without the machine because you have the real the same images from the machine at the end you don't need the machine to do the programming it's much easier to to do so these solutions uh, if you don't have to uh, the need of the machine on your side <clears throat> of course uh, you get a result and now the uh, the result of the tool is 529 this means it's pixels. So the distance between the left and the right is, one, is 529. It's pixels. So of course, normally you want to measure in, uh, in millimeters. So you have to calibrate uh, the field of view. And uh, let's see, first of all, we want to print what we see. So we can print or send the values which we have. A fast way is um, we can simply we can simply print pixel so and we can position it at this position and we see 529.7 if we run it okay we see we have a slight difference uh, between 529 0.34 to 31 so it's a, a half a pixel roughly uh, uh, modification um, uh, inaccuracy this uh, doesn't mean it's half a millimeter it's less than half a millimeter of course because uh, of the pixel size and of course we as I told you we do all the measurements in sub pixels that's why we have we didn't say it's 529 pixels it's a fraction it's a 10 uh, it's roughly an accuracy between a tenth a third and a tenth of a pixel so this is front light normally we uh, suggest uh, or we we would say the accuracy is uh, a third a third of a pixel um, uh, if it's a through light a backlight situation or through light situation uh, it's a tenth of a pixel the stability and of course, you have a lot of options to, to uh, see how, um, how stable your values are. So you can, uh, you have always um, so option to, uh, to generate your CKP value for, <coughs> for, the, uh, for, your, um, for the measured values. So you simply can add this statistic uh, module to your, um, to your measurements and um, so the, the lower specification would be maybe in this case uh, it's 529 and the upper is 531 and um, if you run it now you will see uh, of course we have four images here that's why we see these four uh, for these four images uh, the the modifications of the pixels. So if we go to the real values and we reset everything, and then we see um, here these are all the values. And of course we can see now uh, you can see it, but now I, I modify uh, modify the brightness uh, close to the part, and um, you see the uh, the modifications uh, which contains the um, front light situation but as we see we are we have a standard deviation which is roughly in the uh, area which i mentioned so uh, it's really easy to make this kind of uh, uh, measurement solution even with much more measurements um, so right now we use the caliper so for the moment we have an uncalibrated image but uh, there is an, an easy option 
to do this measurement also in a calibrated uh, way. Therefore, um, we simply have to tell the system how big is one pixel. And uh, in this case, we simply uh, have a look to the, or if you look to the specification or we measure, we go to a measuring machine and we see, okay, the inner diameter of this uh, ring is 10 millimeters. In this case, we simply use this and say, okay, we do now a calibration of the field of view. And based on that, we can we generate then the real uh, millimeter values. This is one of the next steps which we want to do. So for the first thing, we simply take this, um, uh, this program, we save it, and now we make a new one uh, based on the old one we have, and we say uh, measure in millimeter. So to measure a millimeter, first of all, we have we need a calibration. We, we need to calibrate the field of view. Therefore, uh, we make a, a calibration program, and um, we make a simple measure calib. So how do we calibrate? Uh, oh. I want to delete this one. Okay, so a simple way to do this is we simply measure here the uh, inner diameter. And um, as we assume we have uh, a part which is not moving, it's not moving because I don't move it, but this is a live image as you can see it. Um, so we use simply also the caliper tool and um, We measure here the inner diameter to have the highest value. So we may, um, that means the uh, biggest distance. We do this. Um, okay, we need also the threshold to a different value. Now, in this case, we want to measure the black object. So it fits. So we have the X calibration value here. And if you want to know it, we see it is 253 um, pixels right now. And the, the, the calculation is very easy. Uh, we simply uh, do a, uh, we divide the real world value to, um, by the pixels. Uh, therefore, we have, we have different options. One of the options is um, our uh, calculate our uh, let's say multi-tool for operation on on variables, and in this case we do some arithmetics. Uh, we uh, want to divide a value, and in this case a manual value because we know it's ten millimeters, and we divide it uh, from either from the pickup list or from the register. We now use the register zero. I explain you in a second the same register, register I wanted to explain you a few seconds ago. So the register, what is the register? <laughs> uh, I simply used it all the time. Uh, maybe you realized um, the, 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 uh, the position of the object was transferred to the calibration part. Or in this case, the, the distance from the caliper tool here uh, was transferred to the access variable. How does it work? Uh, it's done by either, as you, as you saw it when I used this one, either by registers, or if you look here in the pull down, we have the pickup list. The register is a very simple, is a very nice and simple uh, solution. Each tool generates the their important values to a stack. So therefore we have different stacks and you can see all of these stacks if you go to the data viewer. And here we have, the, for example, we have the global string, point list, value register, point register, circle, line, and 3D register. And 
So a distance, a circle, a radius, and so on, these are always values. And uh, that means the result of the caliper tool, uh, if we enter the empty line, uh, is first of all, the most important stuff is the, the distance of the caliper. So that's why it's on top, register zero. And uh, that's the same the, in the case of the object count, at the center point uh, of the object counter is, um, is on the point register. Therefore, the calibration tool uh, in this case uses the, from the point register which is on top, once again, like the value register on the point register, that value to find this point. So in all cases, if you do a, a linear programming, you don't have to think about, oh, where are the values stored? The values are simply on the register at the point where you expect it. If you, if you need more information, you have to look to the description in the help file, but the most important value is always on top. So you don't have to think about it. And Oh, we can open it again. And again, if we go, if we activate the value register and we run it to this point, the result of the variable uh, access, in this case, we do uh, arithmetic, the result 0 0.039, this is the calibration into millimeters, is stored also on top in register zero. That means it's available now for uh, further use. And uh, in this case, we have to remember it for later use uh, in, in the program. Therefore, we can store it. So we don't have to think something. We simply say, okay, we want to store the calibration values. Calib values. Um, and uh, of course, we, we name it, we say calib and uh, calibration is the section. This is a named tool. So you can read what the tool can do, everything. It's not important for measurement. I use it simply. And you can say, this is the X calib value. And we want to, what, what do we want to save? We want to save a value. And uh, of course we want to use it from register zero. So uh, now we have for further use, we have stored uh, for the X calibration, the value. That's perfect, exactly what we need. And uh, we want to uh, calibrate the field of view for X and Y. If you have square pixel, uh, it wouldn't be necessary. There is also another option to do calibration based on a, a point pattern uh, or, or based on a chess point, chess board. Um, this is somewhat more complex, but it results in the same. Of course, you could do uh, with this one, you cannot eliminate um, uh, lens distortion. It's one important thing if you do very accurate measurement. Uh, of course, first of all, you need a low distortion lens or better uh, telecentric lens. If you cannot have it, you have also the option to do uh, a lens distortion correction. Uh, so that you eliminate these lens problems. For our, for our case, we have a very good lens and we can simply assume we, uh, we, don't, we, we have nearly no distortion, so we simply use this one. And we do the same as above, but we measure it this way. And uh, of course I could move it a little bit. So, and um, then we get the, resulting value here 0 0.4. Uh, it means I, um, either here we, we don't have the optimal height value or we have uh, definitely no square pixels. Uh, we don't have square pixels, I'm nearly sure. Uh, the important thing what we have to change here is now the x to a y because this is now the y calibration value. And uh, now we have two calibration values x and y and they are stored um, first of all, in the register, you could access this with the index if you want, but we have stored it also in a file. So, and of course the file is, as always, if you go to show data directory, you go to projects and to our measurement. And if you go to data now, you see here, this is this any file. And we said we have a section, it's called calibration. And we have 
the calibration value 394 and uh, the other one is 5, 5 is rounded, that's why we see here in the variable access it's uh, printed as 0, uh, as for 0, so we have nearly the same value. Okay, so we store this one and now we have the two values. Uh, so you see if you send us this zip file from this solution here, we also see does you, uh, how did you make your calibration? Is it working or is it not working? And uh, what, but what we can do now is we can simply open this measure in millimeter. And of course, uh, what we, we throw away this stuff here. This was too fast. And we can delete it. And uh, now we, we have the same thing. Uh, uh, let's say, the part is moving and we want to measure. Well, well, we use the live image, whatever fits better for us. And, um, but the, the, uh, first of all, we have the origin, we here define origin. The next is we want to ca uh, calibrate the field of view. Therefore, we simply load uh, these values, which we generated now and we have stored it. You simply use the same tool and you, uh, you read, the values here. Of course, we automatically it's uh, suggested in the right path. Uh, now we have the option what is available. We have the calib values. We can we have the option to read the x and the y value. Um, of course, it normally y and x would be easier. I don't, uh, uh, but it doesn't matter. So we read a value into a point uh, into uh, a point register and that's it so the first thing is we read the x value the next thing is of course we could use the same from the tool set we read the y value and um, now we have uh, we read the x value and the y value and you see here we have these two values the one, the Y is rounded to 40 because it's 0 0.5 at the end, 0 0.0395. And this 0 0.3, uh, you can change here also the accuracy, then the rounding is changed. So anyway, we have here the, uh, as you can see, we have here the X and Y. And now we do the calibration, the simple calibration uh, without the distortion correction, everything. We use scale factors x factor and y factor and now we are here first we need the x, fa x factor so we use it from the register and we use it also from the register but now because we put x and y uh, of course x is not in the zero position it's in the one position that's why i said it would be easier to make it uh, the other way but anyway you simply have to think a little bit and you change from uh, now X is from position one and Y from position zero and that's it. And now we have uh, modified the, uh, we have scaled the image. How can we see it? We simply draw the axis now and um, the axes are so big now uh, that uh, they are, uh, can, uh, are not displayed here in the field of view. Um, how can we see that we are scaled? We simply use now our uh, tool and uh, the caliper tool, first of all, and we simply uh, change the parameters to bright and we need a reset position. And um, if you don't see the tool, you simply select reset position uh, we have forgotten to change the threshold, of course. And uh, if we do test, and now you see the result is uh, 20.88 uh, instead of the 500. So uh, the, the total ring is, uh, uh, is doubles the size of the inner ring. And therefore we, we have this new value. So we could, uh, to, to see that it works real, um, as expected, we simply can use the caliper again and keep some space for some uh, additional things. 
and we simply place it here and change the threshold here uh, to 80. And we see here it's exactly 10. Uh, should be because this was the calibration what we had. Of course, we have this uh, slight um, uh, changes in, based on the on the noise. So what we can do now is, of course, we can uh, show these values also in, in our statistics here. Uh, I close it. So we saw the resulting of the caliper is always on top. Here it's 9.92, 20.88. So we simply uh, can use the um, process cap capability as we know it's in register zero. Now we, we know we are here, this is um, the upper value specification is 20. So we use 21 and 20 and let's say 19. And Here we use it also from register zero because it's now register zero and we say it's the upper is 11 and the lower is 9. And now if you run it now, you see uh, here they are really stable. They are, uh, are roughly around 9.999. This is the calibration and um, it's just, uh, we, we assume that uh, the 20 point uh, whatever is really based on the rubber. What we can do is I can rotate it a little bit and then we see if it's rotated, we are still at 20.8, 20.7. Uh, um, so if I know it's the wrong one, so this was now my pencil. If I move it here a little bit, so we see it's changing the value somewhat. Uh, we rotate it a little bit. So, um, it's okay. Uh, now, as long as we, um, ah, our main problem here is now, of course, we, we have to we have to see, okay, it's fixed. Um, ah, yeah, that's, this was a classical problem from my programming. First, uh, we have to, um, ah, first we have to do the, uh, the, um, calibration and then we have to do the, um, the image movement. In this case, the, as we can see, um, the position adjustment is not working because it's done before the, uh, before the scaling of the image. So uh, anyway, what we, what we can do at the end, so if you have these questions, you can simply use this one and you see here, um, as long as it's in the field of view, we can do these measurements and uh, we can see also, ah, okay, in uh, this case, in cases when we don't get it, we cannot measure it. Anyway, so this is a, a short overview of how to do measurements. Of course, uh, you could do not only these caliper measurements, um, let's use the live image. Okay, and a little bit. So, okay, okay. So we could also measure, of course, any kind of other uh, dimensions or for example, uh, um, as you can see, we, we not only have this caliper as a measurement tool, we could also do these uh, uh, solutions based on probes. So for example, you could also use this uh, rect probe. Um, and you could uh, search for the, of course, it's the same. We are looking for a bright object. And um, as I told you, you have a threshold or automatic brightness. 
So if you use automatic brightness, you see immediately it works. Else, if you use threshold, we have to use 80 or something between in the right uh, tolerance. So it's also working. Um, as I told you, if you want to have a real uh, stable and uh, uh, calculate, uh, and you can calculate the real values, you shouldn't use the automatic. Uh, so for the moment, I use now automatic because it's uh, easier for me. Um, now you could say, okay, I want to uh, determine the the best uh, circle around it. Um, you have this uh, best fit circle, and you if you use this one here now. This was too fast. Zack. So we can do the best fit circle calculation and we'll realize it's not working. Okay. Why is it not working? Uh, simply, if you have a look to, so that's how we could help you. If you see this, everybody would tell you, ah, it's clear why it's not working. Because if you have a look to the data viewer and to the point list, um, you will see that the point list is still not empty when the additional tools uh, enter. That means uh, if you operate on point lists, you have to select at the right position um, and reset the point list to the value you, uh, to the, that you only use the points you want to use. In this case, and now you see it's fi uh, it fits. And of course, um, we selected, uh, I'm not sure what we selected, radius, we select diameter. And um, you see here it's 20.87 uh, 20 uh, So it's the same diameter, it's a best fit circle. So that's a, a way how you can, for example, calculate circles. But uh, of course, you get also a point. So you could also use the, um, this tool. I was a little bit too lazy. I don't want to, I didn't want it to uh, train it again. You simply borrow the tool from here and you say, okay, I want to measure from here. So we get this, uh, this point here. And um, based on this, in that empty, you can generate. So we move this over here, for example. And of course, this is not the total distance because we are, I think, out of center. But anyway, we get here this point uh, from the point list and we, we are on automatic. That's why it looks not so good. And you can simply say distance, point to point, um, direct distance, so zack. And, um, you have this direct distance. It's uh, luckily in the right way uh, because we are nearly, nearly at the center point. Um, so you can calculate also this kind of distance. Or, um, or if you need an angle, you simply can collect the points and generate a point line. Um, I uh, this this was only a short overview how to do measurements and also to uh, accumulate things. I really recommend if you download this, uh, the software, and that's why I uh, all, all, so first of all, the interesting thing is, if you have questions for, uh, to ask about why it's not working, what you want to do, simply send us a project with all the details, with the image, then we can help you. The better thing is, we, uh, you get also the download link, uh, to our, for example, 2D examples. And here you have the option always to, to look to ready-made uh, solutions uh, so that you have an idea, uh, how can I make it? Uh, and here you find all kind of 2D stuff, also the machine learning stuff, because it's also a gray image, um, uh, one of the gray image uh, uh, solutions. So let's say we do, uh, here I have uh, a little bit more complex solution for this uh, ring demo. And as you can see now, um, when it's finished, um, it's similar to what we, are, we have done. Um, so we, we do here 
the statistics, we do all the, the measurements. You will find here also uh, the how to do the scale, um, how to do uh, scaling the image that you can measure in millimeters and everything. But here you see also we, we don't use the blob tool, we use the, uh, the key match because uh, it's not a round part, it's not a round part, so we have to adjust um, it not only in the X, X, Y position, also into rotation. Therefore, we have this pattern matching tool, which allows you to match any kind of pattern. And uh, uh, you can see here also, we, we can do some different uh, uh, matchings, or you can, uh, you see here an example for how to select the different tools or different tasks you want to do. Uh, Oval part here, we can search in, or, um, or you simply select some of the other projects from 2D area examples. Um, let's say um, here the 30D, uh, this is maybe nice for you to see how, uh, how to adjust even a total distorted image. Um, uh, if you have this kind of image and you have to measure it, of course, you can do with the, uh, with the 2D uh, uh, calibration tool, a complete correction of these uh, uh, angles so that you, of course, it's still, it couldn't, and it's a round part. And uh, you see here, you have not the correct edge. It's based on, on the height, but we are nearly after the correction. Uh, we are nearly on the right uh, on the right value, so that's really a powerful tool to even work on totally uh, crapping image. Uh, in most cases, it, it's enough to work on this. Uh, if you have some similar stuff and you cannot uh, find, uh, you don't find out how it works, simply ask us and we can um, uh, help you how to make uh, how to make a solution. Uh, the same is uh, we have this, um, uh, for example, uh, threat inspection tool, uh, which is which means it's at the end it's also a kind of measurement. It's uh, we we measure uh, the screw here and uh, uh, the threads and everything. So you we have all uh, these kind of application algorithms to do this these two uh, D measurements. Uh, also for the uh, thread inspection inner, of course, to do the inner thread inspection, it needs a special image, a special lens uh, with a special light. Uh, to get this inner thread of uh, uh, inner thread, uh, but at the end you have the tool to determine if the thread is okay or not. And you see, you have you get always here different images that you can see how the tool is working and how you can make solution with. Uh, the iVision software, finally. Um, and therefore, we, we have uh, some more, um, maybe this is a nice one, I'm not sure. Therefore, you have a lot of uh, examples which uh, are close to uh, what you want to do. Uh, here, this is the key match. Uh, as you can see, he matches it for, uh, for any kind of pattern, the complete part or part of the pattern. And maybe we see here, no, we don't see it. Um, so in, in this case, uh, the, the key match simply search for the part and you simply can uh, do the next steps uh, if you use the um, calibration tool and simply enter it after the key match. You, of course, instead of, uh, you use ori origin and orientation and immediately, you see if we activate the axis here that uh, the coordinate system moves with the part and if we do these measurements or uh, the edge detections you can for example find here this is a special kind of probe you saw maybe you simply uh, put this probe here of course this is a backlight situation because it's through, through light we have a very good contrast so this uh, probe automatically generates a straight line. This means this is a combination of these, um, um, where is it? Oops. 
of the edge detect of the rect probe and the straight line tool and the point lists so uh, that you don't have to use three tools you can use this one so we get the straight line for the other edge we could use exactly what i told you you can you, okay you don't need so much space um, um, anyway with that so first of all, as I told you before, we do the reset of that. Then we do a reset, um, reset of the point list. Uh, then we use the edge tool here, the normal one, which we used in the example before. Uh, so, duck. and um, we get these points here. And at the end, you simply use the straight line tool. Best fit straight line. Uh, okay. And you see here now, uh, either you use this tool or this tool, but as you can see, it follows the part always. Now you could also, uh, for example, determine the angle between these two lines. And you only uh, determine is it between line and two, two and one. So it depends on. Uh, which angle do we measure? Uh, that means here, do we measure this angle or this angle? Uh, but at the end here, we have uh, 85 degrees and that's exactly what we mean. So uh, we have not only the, um, uh, the re straight, uh, um, the, the rect uh, angle probes, which can be positioned if you have more something like a probe, uh, like a circle. Um, we, hide, we we have this uh, uh, this circle probe tool, which means you can simply determine a point, and either you do the um, the the probing on the complete circle, or you do it on a section of the circle. So here you select here the section. Uh, it's the same. We are looking for a dark object, and uh, of course to it would work it's a backlight situation anyway so now we um uh have this uh, uh, inwards so we want to do it our outwards and now we see here these points if we increase the bright you see here these are the circle probes and therefore you can use then as uh, uh, before the circle best fit circle to calculate the uh, the fitting circle into this uh, object and so on. So you have all these tools and you see uh, we can measure it um, uh, completely here in the field of view. What I want to sh show you for, for the end of the day also, um, of course, now we saw always how to make solutions for, for uh, how to make the solutions. But at the end, if you're finished, um, maybe you want to have something which you can um, give to a customer or to someone who is working at the machine and um, therefore you can make any kind of user interface um, you have all kind of buttons so this is um, uh, this is a start and stop user interface you can control the button size uh, everything the colors and of course um, you also have the option for example to do a uh, adjustment for all the parameters. So you have sliders and spin boxes to adjust things. And um, of course, finally, you could also go to the integration mode. This is where you do the programming. And here we see also, this is what I told you at the very beginning, you have the demo version. And the demo version, as you saw, captures the imaging, can do everything. But all, all the time, if you do communication um, to, uh, to any other system, then um, the, uh, the demo tool uh, doesn't do it all the time. It does it in most times, but not all the time. So wh what kind of information do we transfer here? Or what IO do we, we are doing here? We do image transfer. That means we send out the images, in this case, to our web server. Uh, you have some other options and um, you can use this. And in this case, of course, 
uh, it's an optional tool which is normally built for all kind of uh, uh, so let's make it smaller so here we are and what I want to show you also if you define if you simply define it you simply open up the web browser and <clears throat> You, uh, if you know the IP address of your system, or if it's on the same system, then you know it's local loop. You can access it also by local loop. Then you have, um, I think it's not okay. In this case, I think we didn't activate it, the web server. So you have to activate, of course, the web server before you can use it. Um, And here we are, uh, program, uh, program control, web server, or it's enabled. 88 is also correct. We do the apply once again. And uh, if you if you apply uh, if you activate web servers or something like that, you have to restart the software before the web server works. So let's try it again. Um, and of project the area examples. Uh, web gear. So the system sets up everything, uh, loads the startup program. So you can control how the system, the system should start when you uh, when you first do it and uh, local loop 127001880 ah yeah so now he activated it and you see you can control the iVision software that's what i wanted to show you also from any kind of uh, may, um, web interface so we have here the uh, the Firefox, but you can also use uh, for any kind of uh, the, the Chrome, whatever, or the uh, Apple tool. And um, you see here, you can control uh, the software wherever it runs on an embedded system or smart camera. You can run it, you can control it also from, from a web front end, which you have to generate. Um, and uh, then you have full access to everything. And th that's why we have here this IO, that's from where we ca uh, came, why we have here now this IO. Uh, if you s really have a look to it, um, uh, you, you will see, we see here more images. Always if, we, if here is edit one of the lines now, we missed one of the images. Uh, in, in this case, it doesn't matter, but if you connect to a robot or to something or to a machine, you don't want to miss any IO operation, uh, whatever it is. So that's why uh, this is the only restriction for um, you have. And of course, um, you, uh, you can prevent the, um, the user from changing between these uh, menus and so on because you have, of course, uh, user administration dialog where you can put passwords behind of everything. So this was some uh, a short overview about the iVision software, uh, how to measure things. I think we had a very uh, good overview about measuring. We saw the different hardware platforms, of course. And um, you can run all this stuff on all these different hardware, which I mentioned before, and to, to have an idea how good or bad the image is, uh, and as I told you, um, light and lens, <laughs> good contrast means also a good measurement. Uh, so you have to think if you want to measure it very precisely about a very good uh, light and lens situation. So therefore, I thank you very much for today. I hope it was somewhat interesting. And uh, if you have any questions, you have uh, the, uh, our mail address. Uh, simply download it and try it out. If you have questions, send us your project and we can help you. Or request for a, a special uh, uh, 
session with one of our engineers, which can help you in any case. Uh, I thank you very much and I hope I can see you in one of the next sessions.